Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 74. Tech Talk number 74. How is it we've done 74 of these? And we don't run out of stuff to talk about. We just Never. keep going. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's always going to be something new to talk about. But, uh, well, you've got some, you've got a few things in your tech talk up, the, uh, or your uh, your tech update this yeah, week. Yeah, rather than a whole laundry list of news, I was just going to give a little update about my Revelator IO24, uh, a new IO44 that just came out that might replace my IO24, and a, uh, a more in depth demo, essentially, which I'm using right now, the Centrance. Portcaster. So cool. we'll show that off and what that's about and who would want that. That's right. You know, and I've got something. People are always complaining about rumble. So we're going to talk about rumbling and how to fix that. And we're going to answer your questions that you're now going to put in our chat room so we can answer them. Anything at all with voiceover tech, George and I will give you the right answer or at least convince you it's the right answer. <laughs> so stay tuned. It's time for voiceover body shop tech talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Wim. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B S Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Now you hit the right button. Tech Talk. <laughs> Tech Talk. All righty. Well, we're here to uh, to talk about home voiceover studios. Yeah. And again, you know, somebody, you know, 11 years ago, and we're going to be in our 11th anniversary in just about a month, believe it or not. Actually, in three weeks, March 22nd is marks the 11th year we've been doing this show. Wow. Yeah. And someone said, Who's going to want to watch a show or listen to a show about home voiceover studios? Uh, and Well, luckily we find other things to talk about, too. <laughs> well, that's true, <laughs> fortunately. Uh, <laughs> but we're still here, still doing it, and we still love having you here, and we love having your questions. If you've got a question about home voiceover studio tech, a piece of gear, or a problem you're having, throw it in the chat room, and we will be happy to answer it in just a little while. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, I guess if you're just joining us for the first time, uh, boy, you've missed 74 of these or 73 of these. <laughs> you got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, and of course our, our other show where we, we were interviewing great guests. Um, but George and I are home voice over studio consultants. We're the only guys that really do this. Full time. This is what we do. I mean, I'm also a full time voice actor and stuff. And but George is an engineer. I mean, as the intro says, he's a Virginia Tech grad. I mean, that's got to be worth <laughs> something, isn't it? I have the paper to prove it on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my my all my sheepskin behind me here too. Um, and if you have a problem with your home voiceover studio, or if you have no idea what on earth this involves. 
And you need to talk to somebody who can actually teach it to you from the ground up. So all you have to do is hit record and be a voice actor. We're the guys to talk to. Uh, we make it simple. We understand the basics of what it takes to have a home voiceover studio. People are so intimidated by it. And it's like, it's technology, it's computers. You talk to us, it's none of that. Well, a little bit. You know, if you know how to turn your computer on, that helps. Uh, but we're here to teach you how to do it properly, and uh, we do it professionally. And if you'd like a consultation with one of us, you can talk to us personally and actually have us, you know, if you're in L.A., we can actually come to your house. We love making house calls. Uh, but we can do it wherever you are. I have preferred studios in Egypt, in the Philippines, in all sorts of places just over Zoom because we're really good at it. If you want to work with George, where do they go? They head on over to georgethe.tech. And uh, that's where all my tech support is. Uh, you can check out the menu on the top of the site. Yeah, it, currently the site is a little bit of a, I like to call it a Greek restaurant menu of services. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot on there. I have to get out my bazooki now. <laughs> you know, those <laughs> restaurants are made, they have like a 15 page menu, right? Of like what they make. We do a lot of stuff. Um, if you're not sure what to do when you first get to the site, I would recommend you start with one of two things. Either get a sound check, and that's the way you just you just send audio to me and I give you feedback on the audio quality, not your acting and not your processing, but your audio, raw audio. And um, you can also, really, if you've got more than one question you need answered, just sign up and get a consult consultation. It's right there on the tech services area. There's studio consultation and tech support. Click on that in the menu. That's where most of you will need to start so we can assess what your needs are and really get a lot of questions answered right in that first 30 minutes. I mean, we make a lot of progress quickly, uh, especially the more prepared you are, the more we get done. So that's how you, how you work with me. But Dan does a similar thing over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, go on over there. That site is almost ready. I, I, it's like this close. Removing I'm the, jealous. I'm just getting started, but yeah, we're, the, getting, we're rolling. The, yeah, the, the, the specimen collection cup will be moved to the top, so it'll be easy. You go, you go to homevoiceoverstudio.com, and it'll be like, oh, there's a specimen collection cup. Uh, and what People come to me and ask me, George, do you have a specimen collection <laughs> cup? <laughs> They've heard yes, it but you. it's not for audio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, mine's a, a Dropbox. Uh, give me a sample of audio. You, you're going to click on it. It's going to give you very specific instructions of what you know I want to hear. And usually, you know, it's twenty five dollars. And usually, within five to ten seconds, I can very quickly determine whether it's got the right stuff or there are issues and things that you can fix. You know, the fact that you're actually sending a sample means that you have the equipment. Uh, and if you've got the equipment, that's one of the most important things because, of, of course, having it is not the same as knowing how to use it. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, that I do is I will teach you how to use it so you will not be intimidated by it. You will love it and go, oh, record. Where's the script? And do your thing. And that's what I like doing. Uh, so go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and... Uh, <laughs> All your problems will be solved, at least when it comes to your voiceover technology. Um, so why don't we proceed now? Uh, what's with your tech update this week? Not a lot of stuff, but I think you're probably going to talk a long time about a couple of things as opposed to a little bit about a lot of things. Yeah, a little bit more in depth this this week, I thought I would, because I got something new and, you know, it's nice to use a product. It's nice to receive products to review that we can really really actually use on the show not just use for demo but really put to the test in a real world situation and that's exactly what i'm doing tonight so first of all be real quick i'll, I'll give you a little update on my revelator um i again? Have, we're talking I've, about the revelator again <laughs> i've had issues with the revelator i started googling uh you know getting tech support i've reached out for a ticket with persona so in the meantime found out that they, they pushed out another revelator called the IO44. And the IO44 seems to be more like the product I'm about to talk about. 
the Centrance Portcaster. And the, it's still using all that software DSP that has that fancy mixer on board. But now instead of two mic preamps, it has one. And on the second channel, where it would normally have another mic, it's just a line input. But interestingly, it also has a headset input. So on the front, the headphone jack is actually a headset jack, meaning it's TRRS. So you could plug in a gamer headset or a lav microphone uh, setup or even just an Apple Apple headset. Now, I don't know what production scenario would be where I would use this. It's just another interesting feature built into this unit. And just that the line input on it to, alone is going to make it a little bit more useful. But that's the IO44. It's coming at some point. I haven't gotten to test it yet. But if it has a fix for some of the oddities that are happening with my IO24, if they you know push this new one out with a better firmware, whatever it is, I'm game to give it a shot. But in the meantime, a totally different direction on how to create an audio interface, mixer, recorder, phone patch, all-in-one device is the Sentrance Portcaster. And uh, Michael Goodman, who Dan and I have known of and known really for a really long time. Yeah, because quite, he, quite a while. Over 10 years ago, he came out with the Mic Port Pro. We... It's just such a well-loved device because of its sheer simplicity, super portability, and sound quality, right? And it just became a staple in everybody's portable kits. I still have at least two of them that are still working in various locations, like depending on what I'm doing. But anyway, that thing has evolved and turned into new products. And eventually, he came out with the Mixer Face, then the MicPort Pro 2, the MicPort Pro 3, and now the Centrix Portcaster, which comes in just the same pl basic plain cardboard box. It's <laughs> all of this box other stuff. A, whole a lot, simple but... <laughs> cardboard box. You know, nothing fancy here, right? Nothing. All, what's fancy here is what's on the inside with these things. But you get a, you get a really... The original gear came out with a single-sided or two-sided 3 by 5 manual. This goes a little bit deeper it actually unfolds. So here's oh, the whole you've manual. Got a couple extra pages there. <laughs> That's the whole manual right there. It covers almost everything you need to know, but there's still a few little things to unlock, and that's what you're going to learn by using it. But anyway, I see if I can pick it up without creating, uh, actually interrupting the show. There it is. So far, so good. The Portcaster. Uh, so it's got two microphone, proper XLR balanced, preamped. And phantom power available microphone inputs. That's similar to the mic mixer face. But it also has an additional input that's called the phone input. Now, it also can just serve as a, 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 normal, um, a normal line input. But it also works as a mix minus. Not really legible, but it says that in tiny letters, mix minus. Explain so, what a mix minus is for those yeah, people. Yeah, so a mix like minus a, a is... Here's something we're all, we're all used to Skype and all and 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 these phone conferencing apps that try Zoom, to remove yeah. the loop, right? Zoom, remove the echo, right? So they're doing all this fancy s signal processing to remove the echo. That that's the sound of your voice that goes out and comes back to you if their setup has speakers, right? But in the pro audio world, we do not like echo cancellation. We don't want anything like that. We just want it's pure audio with no funky processing. And that's where a mix minus comes in. That allows you to send audio out or actually more accurately receive audio from someone on a phone call or a Zoom or whatever, and then send your audio back, but making sure their audio isn't being sent back to them. This is really important for, for clean phone patch type sessions where you want them to hear you uh, and hear uh, and them and you hear them but nothing get mixed together, no echoes, things like that. So this does that. And the, the key element is that you need to plug in a headset, a device that has a headset jack. So in this case, I'm not using a phone, although that's probably the primary thing most of you would do, is plug this into a lightning adapter and plug it into your iPhone or into the, if your phone still has a headset jack, <laughs> if you have a phone with a headset jack, type it in the comments below. I want to know what <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, what are you, uh, a Razor, a flip phone? If it has an actual headset jack, <laughs> if it's an iPhone 5 or something, 
uh, this this will plug directly in, but most of you will need a lightning adapter. So that what that does is now your phone is the actual phone patch. And what's that mean? It means you can make calls, receive calls, hear them in your headset, and uh, and they can also hear you through your professional microphone. But that also means you could be running Zoom on your phone or Skype on your phone. And then now that separates the Skype and the Zoom feature uh, overhead or complexity or whatever from your workstation. So if you're using, um, especially Windows users are going to love this because, man, we have had endless glitching, conflicts, et cetera, et cetera, for anybody who's trying to use Windows with Adobe Audition or something else, and they're trying to use Zoom at the same time, it has been a nightmare for you guys. And I apologize. I wish I, wish I had the ultimate secret weapon to fix these problems. And it, as far as I can tell, it doesn't exist. So the closest thing to that is a podcaster because now your audio, pro audio app is the only thing that's using a USB interface. And then your built-in headset jack on your laptop can be through this uh, secondary phone patch cable right here, or actually on this side right here. So it it lets you separate those two worlds out. Now, the thing that's amazing is I thought, well, every time I've tried to hook two cables to the same computer, I get interference. You know, if you try an analog connection and a digital connection or US, there's always seems to be something weird. Like, do you hear that sometimes, Dan, like the the USB whine or that just weird. Or you might sound. get a grounding noise or something like that. You know, like, you know, if, if, if actually, if you touch the, the headphone jack on that, we're getting that. We're if getting I touch little... this. Oh yeah. Or if I touch, or if I touch the headphone jack. No, 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 here, right? no, the, uh, the, the other one, one that one. Beep. Yeah, yeah. You're getting a buzz when you touch that. Right. So this. So don't touch that. that. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that anymore. <laughs> this this eliminates that. And also because another reason that helps is because it's self-powered. It's running on battery, uh-huh. which is an interesting point to make, the fact that it's on battery and it's saying that it's running low. It's flashing at me. Uh-huh. So during the next break, I'm going to be plugging it in. <laughs> but, uh, um, but anyway, this allows you to have that separated audio signal just for communications, Zoom and whatever. And then your pro audio recording software is going to feed from the USB. And the thing that's even more interesting is it not only does that mix minus, but it also allows you to play things back, which is nowadays become extremely common. Can you play that take back? With this, you can. You, it's built in the ability to do that. Now, there's the ability to control the mix of it, whether it's in stereo versus mono. You can control in your earphones how much of yourself you're hearing versus how much of their is coming back to you. All of this can be controlled with these six knobs on the front. And with a little bit of practice, it's really easy to operate. Um, I've been using it all night, and it's been a really good user experience. But all that is amazing, but it also is a recorder. So, And stick, it records. And but it wait, records. there's more. <laughs> yeah, so you stick a micro USB card in this slot right here. You can see the power lights flashing saying, dude, you're running out of battery. Um and that's the thing. This thing needs battery or it needs to be plugged in all the time over here. And I, I didn't find my power cube. I got to go plug it in during the break. But it's all built in. But you can pop a memory card in, hit record, and now it's also recording everything internally. And that's huge. That means you've got backup all the time, real time, while you're recording. No matter what happens on the computer, loss of data, digital glitches, whatever wackiness happens on the computer end, is not going to be affecting what's going on inside here. And I think that's a really great, awesome secret weapon. I know a lot of you may never use this, but it's just so nice to have that peace of mind. It also has a high-pass filter and limiters on both inputs. So anybody who's used to having that feature on the MicPort Pro 2, the Mixer Face, or the MicPort Pro 3, that's here as well. So um, if I really hit my input hard, you'll actually see a blue light light up. I see that. Hey, now. Hey now. I even clipped a little bit right there. Um, that blue light says you're hitting the limiter. I don't know if you can tell I'm hearing a, hitting a limiter. I don't know if it sounds like I'm hitting a limiter, but it says I'm hitting a limiter. So anyway, that's that's a real quick overview of that podcaster. There's more to unpack, but it's 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 a very impressive device for its size. I think at the $500 US retail price, it's an interesting sweet spot. It's a lot more than a Scarlet. It's a same as an Apollo Solo, but it doesn't require 
any control panels, no software, no firmware updates, none of that crap. It just it just works like out of the box. It's all soft. It's all it's all hardware. It's physical knobs. It's mix. It's I I love that. It just there's just none of the monkey business that it comes with the Apollo console or any of those control panels. And I I think that's really pretty awesome. I, I love the feeling of hardware that just works the way it was designed to come out of the box. Yeah. So. Those, those of us that came out of radio are used to that sort of thing. I mean, what you were describing with the mix minus this is, feels is basically more a, like broadcast right, quality, which gear. is what it's designed for. It's designed for podcasting, which is a workflow, you know, for broadcasting as opposed to voiceover, which is hit it record, is. do your thing and that sort of thing. It's a podcaster's but, tool that also does voiceover type production really well too. Right. Yeah. Especially if you're, you know, you're doing things remotely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and the, and the, the mix minus is what we used to refer to in voice in, in radio as, you know, the Q channel, uh, you know, right. you get, you, it, and, and I know this is totally dating myself. Now I'm getting an echo too. Um, yeah. Unplug that. Yep. 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 <laughs> it's still doing it. Um, yeah, if you want, you're going to queue up a record, which is why I was going to date myself. You know, you, you put the needle on the record, and you'd have that in the queue channel while you were listening to some other song. And uh, I think the battery's going on that, George. The battery did die on that thing. Ah, doesn't doesn't take much to fool me. Um, but um, you know, I I'm going to talk about something. I'm going to give you a chance to get the the power block for that in a second. But uh, are you hearing yeah. a little bit of an electrical? Oh, I'm slide? hearing lots of that. Yeah. See, so now, make now, sure now, you wanna... charge these things before you demonstrate. Them. I mean, it's a happy accident because I want to demonstrate. If you try to charge this unit from the same computer that you're using for the audio and everything mm. else, this is what you're going to hear. So you cannot charge it from your USB hub on your desk like I'm trying to. You need a separate power supply. So I'm going to switch that out in just a second. Okay, cool. While you continue your, sh- your yeah. spiel. Yes, well, I was talking about queuing up records, and, you know, you could go vo- 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 get the record queued up, and you'll see DJs do this, too, and you know, in, in clubs. Not that I've been in a club in the last 20 years um, or, or more. Uh, um, but, okay, and now it's gone. I switched to the built-in USB. Ah, well, there you go. I'm not using the, the phone patch connection anymore. It's purely digital, all USB. And is it clean? Well, it's, it's only coming from over here. Oh, okay. So and, I'm And panned, not from over there. I am panned hard left right now. Yes. Yeah, so if I turn this knob right here. <laughs> and there you are. <laughs> cool. You can mix it from stereo to mono by a knob on the front of the unit. So Fun with audio. But is it clean still? Yeah, now it's, now it's great. Oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. So you can charge it on the same USB bus, on the same hub, while it's being used for another, you want to use another port for recording. So that's a great, that's great to know. That's good to know. You can charge it while it's being used noise-free. Just don't use the headset cable on this, uh, the, the phone cable, the TRS on the same computer. That's one too many connections <laughs> on the same, the same computer. So. Just use one of these. It, it makes things so much easier. It well, sure is simple. Yeah, there, <laughs> it's this is this is not a simple device, but it's it's a Goldilocks between going the software way where everything's on a screen with a touch right. screen and all this stuff, and the simplicity of a Scarlet. It's kind of like right, right in the middle between. Right. All righty. Well, I'm I'm gonna let you go find a power block while I talk about what I'm gonna talk about here for a second. Go for it. Okay. Well, okay. We we've uh, we've talked about this before, I think. But George was mentioning, you know, on that particular device that there is a high pass filter, and I get a, I get a lot of audio from people, you know, in my my specimen collection cup. And if it's in a home studio, if it's done in a closet, or uh, you know, or a, a, a you know, like a PVC booth with moving blankets, there's something that is constant in people's audio, and that is low frequency rumble you can't necessarily hear it i mean you can hear like the fan from your furnace if you're or your air conditioner if you're close to something like that but when you're when you're recording that sound is is in there 
and you will see it on, on the meter. And we want to keep our noise floor like under minus 60. And something like that is going to raise your noise floor even though you can't hear it. But I'm going to demonstrate something uh, because I can. Um, we're, I'm going to share my screen here. Let me remember how to do this in StreamYard. Any share. noise coming from me now that I'm plugged into a, not, a little power cube? Not a thing. Okay, good. Share screen. I'm going to share this screen, and then I'm going to... Okay, very good. Uh, just this guy. Okay. Are we just seeing my, my audition screen here? Uh, you're my, seeing the audition window uh, floating uh, uh, over your other... It, we see your desktop. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Rumble is easy to find, you know, in Audacity, you can find it very easily. It's always at the, it's down here. And you can see there's a scale over here uh, that shows us the frequencies that our voice is at. And a spectrogram, you know, uh, you know you'll find this in Adobe Audition and in uh, RX-7. The reason th these things exist is so you can see things that you can't necessarily see when you're just looking at a waveform. I mean, I mean, if you look at the waveform, yeah, you can, you can see the rumble, you know, over here where, because it's, you know, there's a squiggle in the line, that line should be absolutely flat. But if you use the spectrogram and what the spectrogram is, because a lot of you are staring at this right now going, what on earth is that? It is a graphic representation of the, the the difference in volume in different frequencies so are the human voice exists essentially between oh we'll say 80 hertz and about 10,000 hertz you know some people a little higher than that uh but our voice really does not exist below 80 hertz the rumble that we see and if i play this um not that over here you can see in the VU meter that the noise floor is well above minus 45. Let me go back there. I mean, if I just highlight that and play that, you can see in the meter above that it's about minus 45. Way too loud. So we talk about a high-pass filter. What is a high-pass filter? It's generally, it's really, really simple. It's called EQ. So you go into your effects and you get the graphic equalizer. Oh, that's right. You got... In, in Audacity, you got to highlight everything. So I'm going to highlight everything here. All right. And then I'm going to go into Effects. And then I'm going to go into Graphic EQ. And as you can see, I have it set like this all the time. Since your voice does not exist under 80 hertz, especially women's voices, which really start at about 100 hertz, you can cut off all the frequencies below that and tail it off a little bit at 100 here. And then all you have to watch what happens to that little red line underneath at the bottom of the spectrogram. When I click OK, suddenly it's not there anymore. And if I hit play and you look at the output level here, suddenly the noise floor is well below minus 60. And that's how you get rid of rumble. Um, now, if, you're, if you don't have a spectrogram, if you're just, you know, if you're not in Audacity and all you're looking at is this, you'll now see that over here that this line is now much flatter and if i play it again again look at the the meter is not showing us any noise floor so it's an inaudible noise floor that you're that you're trying to get rid of and uh, using eq it's nothing sophisticated it's simply what it is stop sharing screen it's Back amazing uh, how often that is just the primary issue in a in a sample like that oh um, yeah if they say, I have a TLM-103, I almost expect there to be rumble unless they um, ha happen to have a, an interface, a mic preamp, that has that high-pass filter switch, like this Portcaster has. I can turn that on internally and preemptively remove a lot of that. So right. Without it affecting nice your voice at all. Exactly. All righty. Well, we got a pile of questions out there. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it just they just keep piling in. We like to see that. So we're going to have a flash round of answer the questions right after we take this break on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Don't go away. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. 
Spring is coming, and despite what Major League Baseball decides to do, it's high time you got your authentic VO baseball cap. Top quality fabric and embroidery with an infinitely adjustable strap tells the world just what it is that you do do. VoiceOver Essentials VO Gear Baseball Caps are 100% cotton chino twill, garment washed, unstructured caps manufactured by Stylemaster, and feature sewn eyelets, pre curved visor, and a metal adjustable tri glide buckle on the adjustable strap. Available in black with their exclusive VO Voice Bubble design embroidered in red and white on the front and a bright red as heard on TV logo on the backside. Show the world, or at least the people in your town, what your profession is. They're always a great conversation starter. VoiceOver Essentials VO Baseball Caps. Get yours exclusively at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, I want to tell you guys about <laughs> Source Connect as I'm typing a text to my girlfriend um, and let you know how important Source Connect is to your studio life if you're a professional voice actor. Who shouldn't get Source Connect, first of all? I would say if you are still using like a USB microphone, if you even have like a basic studio at home and, and say a closet, but you're in an apartment building and you've got sound of neighbors that you're often finding yourself working around. If you find yourself stopping, waiting for the dog to stop barking or the noise from the neighbors or noise from your own home, uh, then you may not be ready for Source Connect. Source Connect means that you, to have a tool like that, your studio is has quiet on demand. That means when this time of that session comes, the clients are waiting, listening into your recording. They're being rec You're being recorded by a studio somewhere else in another city, halfway around the world sometimes, that whatever they hear from your mic is exactly what that microphone hears. And that is the good and the bad. So if you're going to get Source Connect, be studio, be, have a studio that's ready to work on demand, that you can produce quality professional audio on demand. And that's something you might want to talk to Dan and I about. Let's make sure you're ready to go. And then when we give you the green light, when we feel like you've made the investment and found a place to record, you're ready to go with Source Connect and you're ready to enter the big leagues because it is used by productions all over the place because for the producers that record and engineer your sessions, it saves them time. The audio goes directly into the Pro Tools timeline on their studio and they're be able to work and turn around things quickly and they're able to get client approval on the fly of whatever that's just been recorded. And that's huge. Anyway, if you want to get a demo, head over to source-elements.com. You can get a 15-day free trial there and give it a try for yourself. And let them know that we sent you. And thank you, Source Elements, for your support. Let's get out of these commercials and get to this huge list of questions. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's your me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Oh, you caught me. That's a uh, of command right there. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Better listen. Uh, we got lots of questions here and, uh, and lots of answers, which is why questions are so good. Why don't we start off this humongous list of great questions right now? One from Terry Briscoe. He says, right. he says, okay, I'll be switching over from a USB mic to XLR. 
any advice on how to make the transition smooth? And two, how do you find your ideal I- EQ? Not your IQ. My IQ is already ideal. Uh, the uh, <laughs> interesting. I I was I was I produce a podcast for for some folks, and they had a an actress on who was talking about how she's also a voice actress and was telling people how to set up their home studio. And she's like, well, you need one of those uh, a cable, the mu- musician cable with the three things in it. I'm like, <laughs> musician cable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, if you're going to, people are going to talk about home voiceover studios to other actors, send them our way. That would be a lot easier because you'll never find a musician's cable. To me, a musician's cable would just be a G-string. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, any advice on how to make the transition smooth? You know, USB mics, you know, George, we, it, some of them you can set the levels on them from the actual device itself, and others you have to set it from inside your software. Uh, the most important thing, because item number three on my, you know, what makes good audio is setting proper input levels. And uh, you have to learn, you know, as we say, always in the green, always in the yellow, and with an occasional flash of red. Or I say if you're in the green, you're a little lean. lean if you're yeah. in the yellow, let it mellow. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> But you should be seeing both of those. Uh, so learn to l- use your meters, and that's probably the only transition you really have to worry about when you're yeah. using a, an actual get, interface. Get an, get, if you're going from USB mic to interface, get a really simple one to operate. So you're not adding a ton more options and features that you're not familiar with. Right. Scarlet's are great. Steinberg UR12, UR22. Uh, we always skip a few brands, but there's others. Audio, the uh, Persona stuff, the AudioVox I, IO, is it called the IO1 or I1 yeah, or yeah. something? Um, there's a bunch of those simple two-channel or even one-channel interfaces. That, that's the direction to go for you. And then microphone-wise, you know, we've talked a million times about the Harlan Hogan VO1A. That's a great starter mic. It's a great pro mic, to be honest. Really? If you want to save a little bit of dough, I have got an old-fashioned Audio-Technica 3035 here. It's been replaced with a 2035. $150 still. That mic is still only $150. Mm-hmm. And I, every time I hear it, it blows my mind that it costs that little. So you don't need a big investment. Don't, yeah. And don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, yours is doesn't yours isn't the, the the head isn't bent on yours like it is on mine because we both have <laughs> yeah. one of those. Somehow managed not to drop it too bad. Well, it's, it's a little, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a right dent there. there. Yeah. Those things are made to hammer nails, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and finding EQ that is well, that is the part that is the um, golden years part. That that it takes a while to get the skills together to have the engineering chops to know how to use EQ to tune. Not only just use it, but to hear the the subtle differences. But Dan, I mean, would you say just start with a simple what they call a graphic EQ, which is yeah, the, like I mean, the that, one Dan was just demonstrating. Yeah, I was just showing a bunch you. of sliders and just start going from frequency to frequency to frequency. Let's see what it does. Up, and down, up, yeah. Especially up. Start by going up because you'll really hear that frequency boost. And you do that for a few. Mm-hmm. five ten years and you'll start to memorize <laughs> you finally you finally figure it out yeah, yeah. you'll eventually memorize all those frequencies you start figuring out where to move what it's yeah. just and that's just a basic place to start but uh that does take quite a long time to tune your ears for that yeah and and eq is not something you really want to make gra- you know drastic changes with your audio yeah uh the thing is is the idea is not to sound great the idea is to sound like you which we say all the time and when you're starting to play with EQ and trying to maybe make your voice a little deeper or something like that, to me, that's intellectually dishonest. Uh, you are who you are. You get hired for your ability to read copy, not for your production ability or your technical skills. As long as it's, there's no background noise, there's no reflection, as long as you're not popping your peas. Uh, popping you, peas? What do you pop, mean by popping peas? I like have getting plosives. <laughs> You'll notice I have no pop screen and there are no plosives because proper Same mic here. technique, which is Same item number here. two. Number three is setting your levels right. So if you get all those things right, generally you're not going to need to change anything in the EQ except maybe using a high pass filter. And if you do the little tiny changes that George is really good at at adjusting to get the sound, you know, to make adjustments for the room, not so much for your voice. 
And, uh, you know, but there are some people that know how to use it really well and they're doing promo and stuff like that. For an e-learning thing, you don't really need to be using a lot. So anyway, Jeff Holman's got a question here. In bold type. <laughs> In bold, well, he wanted us to see it. That's right. Uh, you go for it. Uh, Jeff says, I found my old Morantz receiver cleaning out my closet. Man, that must have been a <laughs> dirty closet. Um, <laughs> Dusty old Morantz. <laughs> that must have been a lot of stuff in there. Um, I used to hook up my turntable and tape deck to it back in the 70s and 80s when I was growing up. It is basically a huge paperweight now. Or <laughs> can it be used for anything practical these days? Um, you know, there, there are audio files who find that some of those 70s Marantz receivers are still desirable, that they just do what they do really well, that there's some purity to the analog circuitry, that it's still really a, a great piece of uh, a hi-fi equipment. So if you have room in your home to set it up on a table or a, or a shelving unit and have that hooked up to a pair of some decent two-way speakers you might still enjoy listening to uh, a record on that thing because it, it, it can sound great. Yeah. Other than that, it, in, a, in a studio situation, again, you could use it with a pair of decent quality speakers and have that be your monitors, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's probably too much, too much yeah. going on there. Yeah. Now, I, I picked up an old Yamaha receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, at a garage sale last year. So did my dad. He just got one like a month ago. Yeah, Yamaha. I mean, people are like throwing them out. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll take it. Them away. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what I've done is I have, it's the music system in, in my studio, not my monitoring system. I use Yamaha H2 uh, studio monitors. But when I'm listening to me, when I want to really listen to music, I'll use that. It also is the audio for the TV in here. And we found that if you're sitting in here watching Jeopardy, it sounds amazing on a an old <laughs> Yamaha stereo. But my music system is is my old, you know, RCA radios back here and I and I listen to uh, you know, streaming music on that and you know, it goes to two different radios so it's in stereo, you know. But an old an old receiver, if it's still if both channels are still working and you can still listen to the radio or streaming music on it, they're great. You know, they have a nice sound to them. You know, the There's new something ones, about it. Yeah. You know, especially old ones with tubes. Tubes are great for listening to music, not for voiceover. All righty. Uh, Grace Newton asks, I'm upgrading my shock mount, meaning I'm getting a, I'm, I'm getting one, period. Um, any ones, uh, any, any ones to avoid and or recommendations? Shock mounts, you know, they're not expensive. Uh, they have them in different sizes for different microphones. You know, there's this one that they came with the uh, the Rode mic. You know, wh who makes this one? This is called the, um, oh, I can't remember who makes that, but maybe Rode makes it. Right? You mean the shock mount? Yeah, on, on this Th one. That's the Rycote. Rycote. I mean, they're making their own in-house. They probably licensed it from yeah. Rycote, but uh, yeah. that is a Rycote shock mount. Yep. Yeah. Sh shock mounts are important. Uh, you know, it, it, it the, it isolates the mic from, you know, noise. Uh, the best way to isolate from a, a lot of noise is to make sure your mic isn't mounted on your desk. Uh, <laughs> you know, that can be a problem. Uh, so don't do that. Make sure it's either floor mounted or mounted to the wall, but not to the desk where your computer is. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're simple ones. I mean, there's the one that comes with the Harlan Hogan one that, you know, you just squeeze these two things and the mic, you know, comes loose. Uh, and most mics... Well, you know, most good mics will come with their own shock mount. So, but you can go to Guitar Center or one of those places or on Amazon and type in shock mount, and generally they're all pretty good. I, I like the Rycote design, the lie, they're called, they call it a liar, L Y R E, right. because is, they, yeah. they don't elast, they don't have elastics. Right. It's so plastic, the elastics yeah, don't start rubber. sagging and right. it's like a, it's like a hard, sort of a plastic material, but they don't wear out. I, I like that. Those, nice. Good to know. Big fan. The cable for this thing's going to come eventually. <laughs> We're talking to the people at at at, uh, at Sweetwater, and they're like, "Yeah, they should probably ship the cable for that mic with the mic." But Rode didn't do that. You know, Isn't it just a normal USB cable? No, it's a it's a USB C to Lightning. Oh, that cable. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it'll it'll work. You you know, USB C to USB C, but it's you've, it's a special lightning cable that is not the charging cable. 
It is an auxiliary cable. How about the camera adapter? Does it work with the Doesn't work with, camera Well, adapter? it's supposed to work with the camera adapter, but my camera doesn't have any power to it. So oh, okay. That's not a self-powered one. Got it. Anyway, uh, there was a second part to that question, and... It was about, uh, from, from uh, Grace. Uh, Dan, what do you always say about performing better to get better equipment rather than getting better equipment to perform better? Or was that However what you I said? Did. Will you please reiterate that? Okay, Here, here's reiterate. the original quote that I've been using <laughs> for about 10 years. You don't get great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. And, yeah. you know, learn how to use the stuff that you have to the best of your ability. And then when you upgrade to something else, then you get to see why something's more expensive or anything like that. But we're, we're not about getting expensive stuff. We're about keeping things simple. And if you get your environment right and do all the things that we tell you, you know, having a great microphone is fine and dandy. But as George was saying, you have a TLM 103 and you're in your closet you're going to hear everything else going on in your house. So more sensitive the mic, the more you're going to have other other problems. So don't go hog wild on a microphone. Just don't buy a cheap one. So that's the yeah. actual quote. You don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Because if you're working, they're going to hire you no matter what. Right. Yep. All right. Dave G's got a question. Your turn. All right. Tech oh, a tech question. question. This one under... Uh, quote, if it sounds good, it is good. Right. Um, out of curiosity, I bought a TLM 103 clone. How do you know? Yeah. How do you, <laughs> <laughs> how do you know? Um, I recorded some auditions, sent them out, and I booked a few. Um, a nice space helps a lot, but still, it says more about the space than the mic and the technique. Um, yeah, I ha have to agree with that completely. We're still pounding it into you guys that the acoustics of the space, your mic technique, all of that has a lot more to do with that great recording quality you hear than which mic that they, the actor is actually using. Um, but a TLM-103 clone, I'm very curious to know more about that company, who made it, and is it truly a clone, or is it just a mic that just happens to sound somewhat like a TLM-103? Good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 103, it's a great mic. I had one for a long time, but it, you know, it really does, you know, it reveals everything. It's a Neumann for crying out loud. You know, you can hear it's, people it's skateboarding a, outside. Yeah, it's a studio mic for for great, super low noise, high accuracy recording. And we don't often have that in a home, so it's hard to get a great sound and really take advantage of its, of its quality, its $1,200 price tag. You know, it's, it's tough to get every ounce out of that mic. Yeah. All righty. Uh, J. Horace Black asks, Hey, George, can you show the position of the webcam? You mentioned that it sits lower, so it gives you better eye line for Zoom sessions. This is from J. Horace Black. Right, that's hmm. part number one. Answer that one. Okay. Um, I, let me see if I can make this work. So the easiest way to show the position <laughs> of your webcam is to use another webcam to show. <laughs> and it happens to be working at the moment, so I will do this. So I'll put this back here. This is my POV. Oh. This is a this webcam has a sharp picture and a horrible color. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just the color's wacko on this thing. Anyway, so right now I've got it right here. My, my proper, the one I use for the show. It's really hard to see. I see it. It's, but it's right we, between. We, we trust you. Yeah, it's right between the split of the two monitors. So I just move my two monitors apart, and I lowered it down because I'm sitting about six inches lower than usual. Normally, it's up. It's actually normally uh, up there above the monitor, but it was so high, it was really <laughs> creepy and weird. So that's where it is. It's uh, it's between the two screens, and uh, and that and that can get decent eye line if you take your um. Your, the, the window of whomever you're speaking to and just slide that right up to the edge of it. When I'm, if you're talking to someone looking at their eye line, it almost looks like you're talking directly to them. Not quite, but it's still better than doing this and talking to them like this the whole time. <laughs> it just is not quite as natural. So. Right. Well, that's what the little light on there is. You talk to the light, then you're talking into the, into the camera. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're speaking... Um, if you're on TV, you're used to training, you're trained and used to speaking into the lens like I'm doing right, right now. If you're having a, 
a conversation, that feels weird. You, you want to look at who you're talking to. Now, I don't know what it is about me, and maybe this is true for you. The hard part is to stop looking at you. <laughs> to stop looking well, at I your st- own I video. understand that, but... I don't uh, know why. I, I look at myself <laughs> way too much. I'm not that good looking. Um, I don't know what that's about. But yeah, no, you want to look into the lens whenever possible and slide. If your lens is near the top, slide the video image of whoever you're speaking to directly below it. So your eye line feels close to, the, to what you're... Exactly. Uh, let's see, hit a part two. Hey, George. Boy, Jay Horace Black likes to ask you questions. Hey, George. Hey, George. Are you still doing the, the TikTok Fridays for previous clients? If yes, what's the time and how does it work? Um, maybe someday I'll get on Tiki Talk. Uh, I'm not on TikTok <laughs> yet. Um, I don't have a strong gravitational pull towards TikTok. But um, no, there is a clubhouse. So if you're, you're, you're on my mailing list on my website, then you are getting an, you've gotten a subscription, uh, you've got an email that uh, gives you a con, uh, the info on how to get to my, let's see, Monday at 10.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. is when I do my client-only TikToks. So uh, for some reason you don't know how to get access to that, send me an email, george at georgethe.tech, uh, and I will get you the link. All righty. Uh, question from Daniel Britt. Says, uh, do you recommend using a small curved pop screen on the 416 for spoken voiceovers? I've never heard of a a, a, sp- a non-spoken voiceover. I mean, uh, kind of a shouted weird voiceover. Way. A shouted voiceover. Yeah, 416 is a very interesting microphone. Um, it can be used in many ways. I mean, it's it's designed to be a video microphone from a sta- as a standoff microphone for for video on set. Um, but they also discovered that if you use it close up, it sounds great for promo. If you use it fairly close and at the right, you know, at the right angle, about 45 degree angle, face, you know, facing, you know, pointing towards your chin or your chest, and you have it, you know, at this height, maybe I could demonstrate with this one better. Take off the clown nose. It should be at about a 45 degree angle in front of you like that. And don't talk directly into the, into the diaphragm. Um, if you don't talk directly into the diaphragm, you don't really need a pop screen. A lot of people, you know, they'll they'll put one of these on there. Except, of course, this thing is called a wind screen, not a pop screen. And the fact of the matter is, is it's not windy in your studio unless <laughs> it is, because um, that's really what it's built for. It doesn't really stop plosives all that much. Uh, te- Mike Technique does a whole lot more for uh, dealing with plosives. So uh, uh, I would say you can get one of the Hook Studio triple triple screen ones if you're doing promo and you're talking directly into the mic and you need you, you need to, that plosive control. But uh, for the most part, and of course, there are people who say, absolutely, you got to have a pop screen. I'm like, fine, go use your pop screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your turn. All right. Somebody just uh, peeled out around the corner. <laughs> whoa. I actually made, I actually made it all the way over here. I heard that. Um, <laughs> two more questions. We'll slip in here real quick. Uh, Mike Max Goldberg says, I recently picked up an iRig Pre 2 for podcast interactions and such. Not for voiceover, of course. What do you guys think of that unit? Um, that's made by IK Multimedia. They make all kinds of little interesting gadgets, and yeah. most of them I've always found to be missing something I needed, <laughs> something about either sound quality, proper monitoring, or something. Um, I have not, I have not demoed or used the iRig Pre Two, so I cannot speak on its quality or features. So I'm sorry, I don't know. But um, you know, if it does everything, you need, everything you need it to do, and it doesn't have a lot of hiss. It's probably a good unit. <laughs> I just haven't used that particular one. So yeah, IK answer. Multimedia makes good stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, the original stuff was like, yeah, it was like you know a cheap mic port pro, and yeah, and they would be hissy. But their later stuff was was a little bit better. Um, so it's gotten better. They their their quality is upping is is getting better all the time. I yeah. agree. All right, our final question tonight from Ann Christ. This is a great question because it's like. Okay. I know who this is, and it ain't Christ. It's Anne Grice with a G. With the, oh, okay. Anne Grice. Fix yeah. that. 
<laughs> and I know Rick. because she's and my Chris. client, and okay. I know the mic that she just bought. Right. And should, we're not going to have time to unpack everything about this mic. But I, I have a simple answer. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> okay. She says, I just got a, my new mic, an AKG C414. That is an excellent studio mic, been standard in, in modern recording studios in the best 30, places 40 years. for yeah. years. Great microphone. Uh, I don't know why all the different configurations. Figure eight, snowman, snowman. Do you call it a There's snowman? There's one called a snowman. It's, oh, it's, well, the, the, well like that's the figure snowman. eight for crying out loud. I think that's the I think that's the, the, the hypercardio. Hyper yeah, yeah, a right. big circle and a little snowman. We're yeah, calling yeah. it snowman for Anne. Yes. Okay. I, we yeah, we try to simplify things so it's like easy to I understand. Like that. I like. <laughs> Uh, cardioid and another, another one. one, which I think is probably Omni. Omni. Yeah. Circle. Uh, also on the back, high Z DB buttons. Could he please explain? <laughs> See, now this is the thing. You explain the high Z and DB and I'll explain the pattern buttons. Okay. High, high Z. Well, uh, HZ. 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 Oh, HZ. Oh, a Hertz. Oh, that's, yeah, well, that's, that's the, the, that's the, that's, that's the, the, the pad. Yeah. That's the, 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 that's actually the high pass filter we were talking about earlier. Uh, that you can cut it off at, at 80 hertz and below, and I'm not sure what the, the 414 has. I think it's has. got multiple. It does, Like yeah. a, I'm trying to remember, because they've changed that mic so many times over the years. I think it has a 40, uh, an 80, a wow. 120. I, it's got multiple mm -hmm. different settings right. for that. I mean, you'll actually find a 414 on stage uh, in a lot of places, uh, yeah. you know, for live stuff. You, know, norm, you might not normally do that for with a studio condenser mic, but the 414 does that and you will it's see a, those it's it's a swiss army knife mic aka exactly. it has a lot of functions because right. it's used for a lot of different things. right and and the db button is is a 10 db pad there's probably multiple That's db pad. pad that, that right. reduces the sensitivity of the mic so you can talk louder right and then the pickup patterns change the way it's like changing the lens on a camera you go right. from a super long telephoto for a lot of reach to an om um, to a wide angle lens that's omni and that's to hear or see as much as you can um, and that's what those different patterns do. And which one to use, that comes down to if it sounds good. If it, it is good. It is you good. had to try them all, <laughs> record all of the all the different patterns, and find the one that found sounds best in your particular situation. It's probably going to be cardioid, hypercardioid, and in some cases, figure eight is probably going to be a good. It's going to be one of those likely that will work well with your voice and your studio and your acoustics and your mic placement and your setup. Outstanding. We got through all those questions and all the right answers. Can you believe it? And we only went a little long. A, a little long, but not too long. All righty. Well, we're going to wrap things up. We're so glad you're with us tonight. And uh, we'll be right back to wrap it up after these messages. So don't go away. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Hey, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and we talk a lot in this business about moving forward with our career, getting more information. We often don't talk about simply getting started. It can be one of the most immovable objects in, in our life, getting out of our own way and just simply taking the first step. And if you're watching this podcast, uh, Voice Over Body Shop, for some tips on how to get started in voiceover or to change something about your voiceover career or to increase your knowledge in a certain area, check out VOHeroes.com's Getting Started in Voiceover. If you go to VOHeroes.com slash start, you'll get all the information. Uh, it's really cheap and I give you a lot to get started in the business, but you might also learn something if you've been in the voiceover business for a while. VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do, 
Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, VoiceActorWebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Well, another hour has gone by like that. And now that I have a more comfortable chair to sit on, it's been a lot more comfortable to be here for that hour. You you weren't standing. And the preceding two and a half hours before, (laughs) three hours or whatever it was. I'm enjoying my X chair so much. It Mm. is so comfortable. Anyway, uh, next week on this very show, we have David Kay. We'll be hey, you. you know, who was, uh, yeah, I just fixed his old radio <laughs> <laughs> and you just built his new studio. Oh so. man. I, he keeps me busy. That guy. Yeah. So he'll be joining <laughs> He's got us. a lot going on. Yeah. It's awesome though. He's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll do tech talk number 75 the week after that. And then Martha Khan is going to join us and talk about Sweet. getting your kids to, uh, be in, in voiceover. Let awesome. them pay the rent for crying out loud. Hey, how's my uh, audio? You haven't mentioned anything. Is it clean? No it sounds noise? great. Sounds All great. Right, so now I've switched back to the headset jack on the Portcaster Pro. Yeah. Right? No longer USB. Yeah. And it's charging, but this time it's charging from a power cube, not from the computer also. So okay. that seems there to work great. Just there, there you, you go. go. You have to find out in real life how, if that will work. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. All righty. Uh, our donors of the week, we have Philip Sapir. We have Thomas Pinto, Shelley Avellino, George A. Whittem, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas, A Doctor Voice, Antland Productions, Shana Prennington Baird, Martha, Martha Kahn. Kahn, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall. We miss Diana. Yeah, and Sandra Manwiller. All righty. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. We need, to, of course, to thank our sponsors, too. Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Oh, we have uh, VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. Voice Actor Websites. And JMC Demos. Demos. Can I slip in a plug real fast? Please, go for it. Thanks. I'm doing a webinar on Isotope. It's March 8th, so by the time you hear this, there'll still be time. Just enough time to sign up, because it will be tomorrow (laughs) if you're watching it. (laughs) The recorded version, if you're watching it live, it's next week. Uh, but March 8th at 3 p.m., March 8th at 3 p.m., you can sign up at georgethe.tech slash webinars. You'll see the sign-up link on that page. And uh, hope to see you there. All righty. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman. Doing a great job getting Thanks, all those Jeff. questions into the uh, the chat room tonight. And, of course, Sue Merlino, our crack technical director, getting it right, doing all the things that need to get done. And, of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Come visit us, Lee. Uh, That's going to do it for us tonight. You know, this is not an easy business. Everybody's intimidated by the technology. Look, we're here to help you out. Make sure that your your sound is good. Because if it sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B. Tech Talk. Tech Tech Talk. Tech Tech Talk. Tech Tech Talk. 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 Tech Jeff, talk. you're early that time. Oh, Come on. Sorry. All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Have a great, <laughs> have a great week. Good night. Thanks for listening. 